Yo, Kepe Sky here. What's going on, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. And today we are doing another Q&A with Kepe Sky. And yes, I am at work. We are doing absolutely nothing here today. So I decided to take some of my work that I would do at home and bring it here and get some work done. So if you guys haven't seen, I was actually hacked on YouTube. A guy hacked my channel, deleted everything. And one of the things that he did delete was the community post. About a month ago, I asked you guys to leave me some questions you guys had that you want answers for. And uh, he deleted all of those. So we're going to go through some questions and answers. I remember some of them. So we're we're gonna go through a few that I remember and some more common questions that I get right here today in this video. So we're gonna start off with one of the most popular questions I get. Should I go for a TV or should I go for a projector? Well, I think it depends on what room you're gonna be in and how, wit, how well lit or how dark it will be and how often are you gonna be in there? So if you want like a full movie theater cinematic feeling, hands down you want a projector. I mean, they get really big and uh, having a projector and a projector screen gives you that you know home theater feel, that movie theater feel. If you're somebody who wants the absolute best picture quality, you're gonna to wanna to go for a TV because they get big as well, up to 100 inches. Now they cost a lot more than a projector and a screen will, but you can get a TV at 100 inches and keep that that best video quality if you want to. Now, if you are in a well-lit room, you may not want to go for a projector because no matter how good or bad your projector is, no matter how good your screen is, you're still gonna suffer from video quality loss if you have a lot of light in your room. So if you're somebody who watches a lot in the daytime, you may want to go for a TV because it'll do infinitely better in a lit room and vice versa. If you're gonna be in a dark room, then you probably wanna go for a projector because that's when it shines its most. No pun intended, shines dark. You know what I mean. But if you are in a lit room, you wanna go for a TV. If you can make it dark, you want to go for a projector. Maybe you have a dedicated living room space that you want to make a home theater, do that. But maybe some people who don't want to turn their living rooms into home theaters and don't have a, a separate room to do so. So maybe you want a TV to keep that living room aesthetic. So it depends what person you are. Now, I've been viewing YouTube pretty seriously for about three years, and this is one of the most popular questions I get, and it's, should I buy tower speakers or should I buy bookshelf speakers? I actually got asked this question in my comment section today, and here's the answer to that. I am a tower speaker person because in my opinion, you can get more dynamic range out, a, out of a tower speaker, meaning they usually play just as high as a bookshelf speaker, but they play usually a lot lower than a bookshelf speaker. Oftentimes, they also handle more power. So if you're somebody in a big room who needs to be able to feed a lot of power to a certain speaker, a bookshelf speaker tends to not be able to do that as well as a tower speaker. Not that bookshelves can't do it, but a lot of times you'll have to spend a lot of money to get the performance that you can get out of an equivalent uh, tower speaker. Now, bookshelf speakers are nice because of their footprint. You can put them on top of things like a desk or a shelf and be okay. I don't necessarily recommend putting on top of things other than a stand, but if you do put them on a stand, well, it's kind of the same footprint. A bookshelf speaker is probably, I don't know, maybe something in that kind of form factor, but you have to put it on a stand that meets from speaker to ground, maybe a 30 inch stand, right? Well, most tower speakers are about that same height. So you're not really saving yourself any space, floor space necessarily, if you go for a bookshelf speaker. So for me, I say go for a floor standing speaker and you should get better audio replication out of a, a tower speaker in, in comparison to an equivalent bookshelf speaker. So if you need volume, power, more dynamic range, I think a tower speaker is the way to go. But if you really are in like a a tight, tight space or maybe a small room, a bookshelf speaker should do just fine. All right, next question is, do high quality cables make a difference? Quick answer is yes. Even quicker answer is that they don't make as much of a difference as some people will claim. There's probably a threshold uh, to where you probably maxed out your ability. Some people will argue against this. Some people will say making your own cables is the best way to go, but here's what I think. So I think if you spend like five, ten dollars on a cable, okay, that's probably the cheaper end. But if you spend maybe 30 or 40, I think you'll see a quality increase as far as like the noise floor, maybe speeds in which things are transferred. You get into the $100, $150 range, maybe you get better quality cables that maybe that can bend a little bit, uh, that again, transfer speeds faster, maybe have a higher speed so that you, you can give a better signal to whatever you're plugging them up to, which in turn, it increases your video quality and your audio quality. But I think once you reach like $100, $150, I think that's where you should stop. 
because there's it's probably minimal increase in performance anything higher than that me personally let's say i'm buying speaker cable i'll spend i don't know maybe 30 dollars on 100 feet or maybe if i'm getting hgmis i think i'm i think my most i've ever spent was 20 dollars. anything higher than that i just feel like is not necessary because maybe you'll see a difference on paper but to the eye or to the ear you don't know it at all so save yourself some money and get what you know it will work versus what a scientist told you works you know what i'm saying because at that point it doesn't even matter um, most of our electronics nowadays will be just fine with a twenty dollar, thirty dollar piece of cable, HDMI cables, speaker wire, whatever the case is. As long as you're getting the wire that meets the needs of what you're using, you should be fine. But unless you just want bragging rights or you want your cables to look extremely good, there really isn't much to, to worry about after maybe a hundred dollars or so for any cables. After that, it's just too much, too much money. So this one's a really good question. This question is how big should my home theater room be? Well, I don't think you can really have a room too small for a home theater. If you can fit the main five speakers, a 5.1 system in a room and place the speakers properly, then it's big enough. You wanna just follow some rules of thumb. There's rules about how far away you should sit from your TV depending its size. There's rules for picking a TV size based off your room's length and width. There's rules about how many subwoofers you should have in a room and where you place them. So as long as you're following the rules of thumb, it doesn't really matter how big or small your room is. You don't want to go overboard. You don't want to have a 14 by 14 inch room or <laughs> don't get that. That's a dog house. You don't want a 14 by 14 foot room and then get like a 150 inch projector screen and, and, and then you're just looking up at the ceiling because it's so large. You get, let's be reasonable, right? Let's be practical. But you, you can put a home theater in any room as long as you're able to place everything properly. If you have to compromise for placing then don't do it. If you have to put your subwoofer in a weird spot, don't do it. Uh, you definitely want to make sure that everything can fit where it wants to fit or it doesn't make any sense. All right, so here's a really good question for you guys. And it's, if I'm building a home theater, how do I budget my money? What do I spend my money on? Well, of course you want to do your research and figure out what you want in the first place, but they'll tell you, when I say they'll, I mean us, our reviewers and YouTubers and influencers and audioholics and whatever, they'll tell you that the most two important speakers in the system is the center channel speaker and the subwoofer. So you want to make sure you put money aside for a good center channel and a good subwoofer because the center channel handles like 80% of the dialogue and everything around it. And then your subwoofer rounds out the sound gives you that full body home theater like sound and so you want to make sure that you buy two good ones of those a subwoofer and a center channel right um, but you want to make sure you don't spend all your money on those two things and not have enough for everything else my rule of thumb which is not really my rule but i definitely agree with it you want to make sure that your picture quality is as good as your sound quality and vice versa. You don't want this OLED TV, 85 inch OLED TV, beautiful picture, 4K, uh, does 8K, whatever. You don't want that and then have a sound bar or maybe a home theater in a the box. You want your picture quality to be as good as your sound quality and vice versa. So budget that way. Make sure that everything is as good as each other because the weakest link in the room will ultimately decide how good or bad your system is. You're only as good as your weakest performer. And so if if you have a really nice sound system but your subwoofer is terrible well then you're really not going to enjoy your sound system because your subwoofer is terrible or maybe you have a really good sound system but you have a 35 inch tv and you have a big sound with a small computer screen sized tv well you're going to miss something right you're going to miss out on that immersion so you want to make sure that uh, you budget everything that so that everything complements each other also when you're budgeting you want to make sure that what you do buy handshakes well with everything else and what i mean by that is there's so many things changing in today's technology tvs do certain things receivers do something things but you have to make sure that they all handshake well meaning you can send a signal from your receiver to your tv and it actually passes through cleanly there's no problems make sure your blu-ray player does 4k if your tv does 4k make sure your wi-fi is fast enough to stream movies at 4k if you plan on streaming movies onto your system so you want to make sure that you budget so that everything complements each other don't spend too much on one thing but make sure you spend enough on everything so that there's not a real weak link no outlier in your system all right, we're going to take care of two more questions. The second to last question is going to be how much acoustic treatment should I put in my home theater, in my room? You don't want to completely kill the sound. You want a natural sound. Naturally, things echo and reverberate and bounce off the walls. You don't want to completely sound dead in your room because it sounds completely unnatural. It, it doesn't, it won't be lively. It'll sound flat. You need the room to influence your sound just a little bit, but not completely. And so we have what we call first reflection points and second reflection points. And what I mean by that is, so you have a set of speakers and let's say they're angled in, well, they're going to fire at a sidewall typically, right? 
And so that's the first reflection point. The speaker sends sound towards you and the first thing it hits and bounces off is the first reflection point. The first place that your speaker uh, echoes basically is the first reflection point. Now it's gonna bounce from that wall to another one, to another one, to another one. You wanna stop the first two reflection points. So the first one is the first wall bounces off and the second one is the second wall with a ceiling or whatever, right? So you want to try to stop at least the first two reflection points. Um, there's different types of acoustic treatment. There's bass traps, there's diffusers, there's absorbers. So it's worth doing some research and, see and seeing what each of those do for the sound and how much of that do you need. Some people have a really boomy sound system, so you may need um, some, some diffusers and some bass traps to kind of lower some of that uh, the mid-range frequencies, tame it down a little bit. Maybe you have some echo problems. Maybe you need some small thin panels, nothing too thick. Some small foam panels may do just fine. Maybe you need some really thick panels. Maybe you need some bass traps to help some of that corner loaded bass. So it depends on your system and what your issues are that you're trying to address, but you always want some sort of acoustic treatment. Even some small stuff like some curtains on a window that's open, some rugs on a bare wooden floor, even pulling your speakers up in front of, like if you have your center panel sitting on an entertainment stand, if you can pull that to be flush with the front, that'll help maybe, uh, produce some better sound out of your center channel. So there's a lot of things you can do for acoustic treatment, but you don't want to put too much in there um, because it'll sound like an anechoic chamber, meaning there is no reflection points. There is no visible wall or ceiling or anything. It's just a chamber of dead sound and it sounds scary. So you don't want to do that to your room. It'll sound way unnatural and it'll freak you out. Um, but you want to you want to treat it a little bit and, and get those first uh, and second reflection points taken care of. Now this will be the last question of this Q&A and this one is my favorite one and maybe I'll do a dedicated video on this if you guys are interest interested. I get this question a lot, especially because I have had two processors back to back and I've had a lot of receivers before then. The question is, pre-processor or receiver? Which one's better? Pre-processor or receiver? And will I hear a difference in the two? You will 100% hear a difference between the pre-processor and a receiver. I'll tell you why in a second. And because of that, I think you should go for a preprocessor if you have the money to spend on them because by default, preprocessors are probably over $2,000. Some of them maybe $1,500, $1,600, but you're gonna spend a good chunk of change on a preprocessor. You can save a lot of money going for a receiver. Now you may say, well, receivers, they have pre-outs, meaning you can plug external amplifier to it. Yes, you can, but that, does, that is not the same level of a preprocessor. A preprocessor has the best DACs that that company offers. Offers, the best sound quality. It has the best room correction, right? It has everything, the, the, the best that that company can give you is inside their pre-processor, right? And receivers are different tiers, different how good of sound quality you want, how many features do you want? You can choose your tier, but pre-processors are cream of the crop, right? And so because of that, the sound quality is always gonna be superior. The DAX will be superior. The Even the lifespan sometimes is superior. And so I'm a pre-processor guy 100%. I will never go back to receiver and it's because of the capabilities that you have. You have the ability um, to plug up an amplifier and have the best DAX power rate, you get the best performance, you get the best uh, signal processing, the best video processing. It's just the, the best for that company of that year. And uh, that's why preprocessors are better than receivers because they have better quality components in there that equal better sound and better picture quality. And sometimes maybe they can equal better um, future proofing as well. Maybe they have better things that'll last longer throughout the years versus a receiver that changes every year. Um, so I'm a preprocessor person, 100%. I think a lot of people who've had a preprocessor will never go back to receiver uh, just because of the capabilities of a preprocessor. It's just superior and the sound quality is superior and the, the calibration can be superior depending on uh, what receiver you may be able to get so I'm a pre-processor person all the time I've had every pre I've had every receiver on the market other than uh, maybe Sony I've demoed them and reviewed them but I've never owned one for a long time but I've had everybody else and I've also had the pre-processor from almost everybody and pre-processors just sound a lot better uh, having external amplification is always good too. Extra power to your speakers is always good. Has a lot better detail at low volumes and a lot more control at high volumes. So a preprocessor is a way to go, especially if you're serious about home theater. Um, so that's my answer. 
All right, guys, that's gonna do it for Q and A with KPA Sky. I apologize if you guys left me any questions in my community post. It did get erased. I, you guys had some really good questions, so maybe we'll do this again here in a couple of months. But I hope some of these questions help you guys out. And if it did, leave me a comment down below and let me know uh, kind of could the questions that you have that were answered, or maybe there's questions you still have. Leave me some down below. I'll try to re just respond to you in the comment section if you have any questions you want to ask me. Um, but thank you guys so much for watching. Hit that like button, subscribe if you are not already, and we will see you in the next video. Keep this guy out. Peace. Lost my mind. I will keep on holding my head high, even if the sky is falling down.